When you take what you have and you invest it into someone else or something else that you can see and help and shepherd grow or even just hands off invest in them, that is wealthy. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, you guys. It is 2022. Can you even believe this? Can you believe this? It's the years go by so fast. They say the days are slow and the years are short. I totally agree with that. I have, oh, it's just been crazy. This last year has been crazy. Last couple of years, things have just been all discombobulated and everywhere else, but we all have so many things to be thankful for. And I am just, you know, it's funny. I, I was having a conversation with my kids the other day and it really kind of turned funny. But before I get to that, I'm going to tell you that funny story in a minute. Um, but here's something I want to share with you. We have about 10 days before our very first workshop of the year. Yes, I said first workshop. So stay tuned. There will be more workshops this year. But this is your last opportunity to grab the last couple of seats for this workshop because we are going to hit the ground running. And those that have come to a January workshop, I'm telling you, they've had really, really great years because they start the year with intent. They start the year with intentions to build their wholesale bundle business in a way that is going to support their life, their lifestyle. Which leads me to, oh, you can save $50 at mommyincome.com slash workshop and use the coupon code workshop50. Save about $50. There's a couple seats left. I'd love to meet you. I'm excited to meet uh, several people that I've been interacting with, um, whether it's clients or in the hub or the Facebook group um, that are actually coming to Atlanta. So you guys, if you're listening, I can't wait to give you hugs and see you and build bundles together. We are going to have so much fun Thursday night, just meet and greet food and drinks and hanging out and learning about each other and just, you know, chilling. Then um, we're going to workshop all day on Friday. We are going to build bundles and groups. We're going to have presentations. We are going to have conversations. We are going to pull out catalogs. We are going to ask all the questions, and it's going to be fantastic. It's something I look forward to for a really long time. So mommyincome.com slash workshop. Make sure you check that out there. And if you're worried, if you're wondering and planning for a future workshop for 2022, stay tuned. We're going to release some dates pretty soon and really excited about that. So wealthy, rich, and broke, right? I'm pretty sure there's one of those that we never want to be. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that at least two of those we can say we want to be, right? So recently I was having a conversation. I came across this meme on um, Facebook or Instagram or somewhere else. And it is, I'm going to show you here. Um, so you can like put it right there, whatever you can see the meme if you're on YouTube. If you're not, just Google it, you'll see it. But it doesn't really matter. The, it's what it says. So there's not really that funny of a picture. It's Shaq and his two grown children, Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, you know, one of the, a really great basketball player. Um, but also there's a lot of things people don't know that you're about to learn about Shaq. But the funny thing is we were, I saw this meme and I was cracking up and I sent it to my husband um, because <laughs> my kids are always saying stuff. So the meme says this, it says, um, my kids are older now and they're kind of upset with me because I tell them all the time, we ain't rich, I'm rich. <laughs> and so when Shaq said that, I thought it was super funny because um, recently I had a conversation with my son who was kind of joking about Christmas and things like that. He's like, oh, can you just, can you buy me a car for Christmas? Like, I just want a car. I'm like, excuse me? He's like, how about a Tesla? <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> it's like, you can drive the same type of cars that we drove when we were young. Um, you know, a beater with a heater is what we used to call it. A hoopty, a vehicle that barely runs, but that's what you can afford and gets you from point A to point B. Heck no, I'm not buying you a car. He's like, okay, how about a guitar? I'm like, well, maybe I'll buy you a guitar for Christmas if it's on your list. And he shows me like this $3,000 guitar. like that. We don't. We don't roll like that. Well, first of all, we, you know, so, so, the, so we ended up anyway. The whole funny part about it was like, we, we, I told them like... Just because I have money doesn't mean that you do. 
I was like, you got to earn that. Now, don't get me wrong. We share with our children. We're very generous people. We we do support them in great ways. But my kids are, my older kids are 21 and 18. They're grown. They both have full-time jobs. They're both working um, and they have hobbies and they have things, but they also have been taught financial responsibility. Why? Because there wasn't a lot of financial responsibility when I was their age because mostly of uh, choices. Number one, wasn't really taught a whole lot of that. My dad did, was very frugal and um, taught me about not about staying away from debt. Of course, I made my own choices, made my own decisions, got into some stuff that we won't get into right now. You know, just like a lot of debt, a lot of like overspending and not and paying attention. So I have not always been financially responsible, some by force, some by choice. But um, all that to say that I was taught some of those things, but I also made some foolish decisions along the way. And I did not want my children to not be aware of um, money that they earn, trading dollars for hours, and whether they want to work a job or they want to work uh, for themselves or be entrepreneurs or whatever else, that, that the difference between being broke and wealthy and rich. And so I thought I would share some of that too, because I think it's super funny that um, Shaq said that because it was like le recently a conversation we had in our house of clearly not to that point. I mean, Shaq is worth over $400 million. But did you guys know, I'm going to give you some fun facts about Shaq because um, a lot of people don't know that Shaq was not just a really a large and in charge kind of basketball player. Um, he is a business genius. Did you know, just fun facts for you about Shaq. His estimated net worth is $400 million. He's the joint owner of 155 Five Guys Burgers restaurants, 17 Aunt Auntie Anne's pretzel restaurants. He owns 150 car washes, 40 24-hour fitness centers, a shopping center, a movie theater, and several Vegas nightclubs. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Who owns Elvis, Forever 21, and JCPenney? That's right, Shaq. Shaq is a brilliant businessman. He has taken his larger-than-life personality and his business savvy and his money, and he has invested it. And he says he makes the, I love this quote. He says, I make investments not for monetary reasons, but because it's going to change people's lives. If I see people doing it and enjoying it, I want to invest in it. He wants to change people's lives. Now that, my friends, that is the definition of wealthy, right? When you take what you have and you invest it into someone else or something else that you can see and help and shepherd grow or even just hands off invest in them, that is wealthy. So I want to break down and go talk a little bit about rich versus wealthy because when I when I was joking with my kids, my son specifically, and was like, "Oh, you're <laughs> you're not rich, we're rich." <laughs> We were talking about this and he was, so I asked him, a 21 year old, what is your perspective of rich versus wealthy versus broke? You know, stuff like that. He's like, well, yeah, I definitely know what broke is. It means you want stuff, you can't pay for it. You're in debt or you owe money or, you know, you, you just can't afford the things that you want. Broke. Not having any money in your bank account zero dollars, whatever else you want, ga gas in your tank, you can't afford it, or you want to buy something, you don't have it. So he clearly could define broke, but then he was, I was like, okay, talk about rich and wealthy. And so just a normal, I don't know, these conversations go on at your house. <laughs> we have like the funniest conversations. So I'm like, what do you think? And he said, well, like rich people are like, so this is his, his version. I wish he would jump on here and say it, but he won't. He doesn't like I said, so what's your version? And he says, well, rich people are like flashy. Like they have expensive stuff and they make really good money. And I said, okay, what's really good money? Of course. And for a 21 year old, that it, that's definitely different than someone who has an entire mortgage and households and bills and stuff like that. So their perspective and perception of what is a lot of money is different. So I just was interested in what his perspective was. And he says to me, he's like, well, you know, people that make like over 100000 a year or, you know, six figures or whatever, you know, he's like, I feel like those people are, you know, they're rich. Okay. That's just perspective. I was just kind of smiling about that. And then he said, yeah, but people that are rich, they're still like paycheck to paycheck. So even if they make like 
$10,000 a week, they're still spending $10,000 a week. They have flashy cars. They have, you know, all the best stuff. They have this and that. But then, like, they're pretty much broke at the end of the week. I was like, that is an excellent definition. And I said, well, what do you think, like, wealthy is? Like, when you think so, if I said to you, so-and-so is wealthy, like, what is your definition of that? And he's like, oh, wealthy is just like, like, you, what, you might have the stuff, but you also have, like, businesses and investing and like a huge portfolio and you've got like stocks and you know you just that you never really have to worry about money and I said and what do most of those kind of people do for a living he's like most of them are business owners <laughs> it's like you win the prize <laughs> so that was funny because you know just getting a 21 year old's perspective on money and like he's funny because you know when they're kids or when they're younger and they're not used to making good good money and that, of course, is different for everyone. Every single person that's going to be different for it. depends on the state you live in, the county you live in, how you grew up, what your lifestyle is, what you want your lifestyle to be, um, you know, all kinds of different things. I mean, people get paid different pay scales for the same job, you know, wherever else. So that's relative. I'm not going to, you know, put numbers or anything on this. But I just thought it was really interesting to have the conversation. So that, he, you know, he was like, oh, I made 1200 bucks this week. Now, mind you, he's a delivery driver. He does DoorDash. He, he's delivered pizza for a, a very... Um, busy college town plus industrial. There's a lot of businesses around here. They deliver a lot of different things. So he delivery drives and he loves it. Um, and so one week he was really killing it. He, he made about $1,200 because he gets tips and stuff like that too. And, you know, he's got a nice winning personality. <laughs> wonder where he gets that. Anyway, um, so he's he's super funny and he, ma you know, made about $1,200. bucks. Like, ah, I killed it this week. I made like $1,200. And, and of course... I never miss a mom moment. I never miss a teachable moment either. So I'm like, oh, how much of that are you investing? How much of that are you spending? How much of that are you saving? <laughs> it's like, mom, <laughs> just let me have my money. And I'm like, don't forget the rent's due on the first. <laughs> yes, I am that mom. My children pay rent in my house. Not until they're 20, but that's always a rule that we set. You're either full-time school, which they don't pay rent for full-time school, either full-time school or they have to pay rent and they start paying rent at age 20 and it goes up every year until they move out or until they reach what is the equivalent of a mortgage. <laughs> Why? Why do I do that? Because I want my children to grow up wealthy and financially responsible. And that it has nothing to do wealth. Y'all, this is going to knock you out of your chair. It really is. You ready? You got a pen? You got a memory. You got a moment to save this video and save this clip. Wealth has nothing to do with how much money you earn. Yep, I said it. I said it out loud. Maybe you've never heard that. Maybe you don't believe that. Maybe you need to be convinced. Either way, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> because wealth does not have anything to do with how much you earn. It has everything to do with how you spend what you earn. It really does. So whether you earn $30,000 a year or $300,000 a year, it's all about how you spend that money, how you invest it, how you care for yourself and for others, and how financially responsible are you. So let's talk about the difference between rich and wealthy because I think it's super interesting. Um, it's not a debate. These things are just things that are out there that people can you know talk about anytime they want to. So what does it really mean? Because a lot of people think that like if you earn a lot of money, then you must be you must be wealthy. But like rich and wealthy are very two and can be very opposite things. Um, you definitely want to be wealthy rather than rich. Rich usually means you think about rich like, oh, my gosh, that person's so rich. You think about like maybe um, movie stars or major football basketball players, uh, celebrities, you know, people that have a ton of money, right? That's because rich usually is about having a lot of income or spending a lot of money or showing off how much money you have. Showing off meaning like you're wearing all high-end stuff. Now, please, please, just we're taking a moment here and we're going to pause because this is not, I don't want you to hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that like 
having expensive things, luxury items, expensive taste, vacations, Gucci, like whatever it is that you want, you know, that those types of things. Like I'm not saying that these things are bad or wrong or flashy or any of those things. It can, they're just things. They're just brands. They're just things. They're just objects, right? But a lot of people use these types of things like brand, like it's like they're flex. They're like, oh, look at me. I've got this. I've got that, right? Um, it's it's a sense of of just showing that you can and you will and you want to. And that doesn't, just being rich doesn't necessarily mean that you have a high net worth. And so I'm way more interested in the net worth than I am in any other thing. Because if you have a Tesla in the driveway and a Rolly on your arm and you're wearing Gucci head to toe, awesome. Do you have debt? Better not. Because at that point, then it's just a, it's just a facade. It's just you have credit cards that you paid for that and you didn't actually earn that and pay for that. So that's a whole different thing. Being rich could also mean that you're that much in debt just because you have expensive things or expensive tastes does not mean that you have the money to support that. Most people that are rich, they spend more than they earn. That's really the definition of rich. You can show off that you have money. You can show that you can afford these things, whatever that means, on the forefront. But if you wanted to peel back the layers of somebody's bank statements, then you could know that net worth, creating a positive network is spending less than you earn, period. That also means that anyone earning any amount of money can be wealthy. It just depends on how you look at it. Like, so here's a story of um, someone who had a lot of money. So you think about some of these celebrities who have like lost a ton of money in their lives. Um, They've made a ton of money, like things like Michael Jackson. Most people didn't know that Michael Jackson when he passed away, had over $400 million of debt. Yet we would think he's a mega, super wealthy individual, right? Mike Tyson with a divorce and expensive expensive spending. I mean, we've all seen this before, right? $23 million in debt. These are people that we would have considered rich or even wealthy, lost everything. You can be rich and on the verge of bankruptcy. Rich is more about showing off your money than building long-term wealth. So what does it actually mean to be wealthy? In a short definition, it is just achieving financial freedom. Chances are you want to become wealthy, right? I totally do. Wealth has everything to do with your most ready. You guys just, just brace yourself for this. It's not like you haven't heard me say this before, but I'm just putting it in a context now, really. Wealth has everything to do with your most precious asset. What is it, ladies and gentlemen? What is it? I can hear the people in the back. I can hear you. I know what you're saying. You're saying your most precious asset, the one that no one can buy, the, the, the one that absolutely no matter who you are in the world, you all have the same exact amount of this asset. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, time. Becoming wealthy means have time to do the things that you want to do, time to spend with the people you love, time to learn about the things that you want to learn about, exploring creativity, your interests, your hobbies, your investments. When you're wealthy, you get to decide when and where and how you work. Because you have the luxury to walk away if you don't enjoy your job. If you are wealthy, you have a net worth. (laughs) I say a net worth because it doesn't have to be a huge net worth. It's basically your assets minus your liabilities. It's just a simple math problem. How much do you own and how much do you owe? How much of your money is your money? much of that. If you are wealthy, you're most likely to have a net worth. You spend less than you earn. You want to build long-term sustainable wealth. Likely people that are wealthy are very humble, not flashy. 
Although you can be either way. That's that's not a judgment. It's just a it's just an observation um, that wealthy people focus more on income producing assets because they do something for you. Income producing assets, things that make money for you, passive income, real estate, investments, things like that that make money while you sleep. My my friend Nicole Walters calls that sleep coin. We may we make that, we call that sleep coin, right? We talk about it being like money while you sleep. So while you are earning that, that is what produces that for you. So that is just like buying time because you don't have to sit there and type keys or do something specific in order to earn that. So when you own income producing assets, aka passive income, you have lots of time to do what you want to do. That's why people diversify what they're doing. Real estate, stocks, investing in business. If you want a term, if you want long-term wealth, building a business is the best place to start or investing in a business or becoming part of a business where you own the assets to which you're trading your time for something that's going to grow long-term. 66% of millionaires own their own businesses. Business is not just one. So let's talk. Oh, this is like the list that I love, right? The wealthiest individuals. Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, Zuckerberg, Gates. You guys know all these people. You know what they do? Own and build businesses over and over and over. So you will never see Warren Buffett driving a Lamborghini. He'll never have a big gold chain and gold rings on his fingers. Why? Because he's also called the frugal billionaire, living in the same house that he bought in 1958. But let's talk about true wealth for a moment. Because it's not just about the commas in your bank account. Yes, I said commas. Do you have commas in your bank account? Because the true wealth really comes from health, freedom, and relationships. Buy you time, which ultimately gives you freedom, which for most people gives you happiness. You guys know I'm not a super health nut, but I'm really, really invested and taking care of myself and my family for that reason. Because you can have all the money in the world, but you can't buy health. It's something that you have to take care of and curate. It's one of your assets. Don't let your health be a liability because it interferes with your wealth. Why? Because it interferes with your freedom. And that also interferes with your happiness. Bringing wealth means you have a positive network, eat net worth, even if that's only a dollar. If you spend less than you earn, the major differences is also how you spend your money. A rich person's money doesn't last very long because they have to go in massive debt for their flashy, glamorous lifestyle. That does not mean that you can't have a flashy, glamorous lifestyle, but people still have to have budgets. It all comes down to how you spend your money how much you save, how much you spend, and how much you invest. Fundamental differences, rich versus wealthy. The rich often live in debt. They earn, they earn a decent amount of money, usually live flashy, don't really save a lot of their money. They buy assets that depreciate. And they spend sometimes to impress others. Let's just be honest about that. Sometimes people do that. They buy that purse, they buy that bag, they buy that car, they buy that house in that neighborhood because they want to impress people. They want people to be impressed with their success, whatever that means. But most wealthy people don't have debt. They live with means. They kind of have an understated lifestyle, but they still really enjoy themselves. Then they save and they invest a percentage of their income. So how do you become wealthy? 
<laughs> How do you become wealthy? Well, there's experts that say a lot of these different things. I am not an expert, but most of them, you can like look at this all over the place. Number one is you can increase your income. If you're not making that much money, you can increase your income. How do you do that? Invest in a business. Start a business. Start a side hustle. Stop buying stuff you don't need. Focus long term. The rich, quick gain will never get you long term sustainability. Also, wealth is about taking care of yourself because if you're the main earner in this wealth cycle, you need to be healthy enough to continue earning. Take care of yourself, your body, your mind. Invest as early as possible. You guys, I'm going to put a link below this video, mommyincome.com slash Robinhood. If you've never invested anything at all, you can start investing a dollar a day if you wanted to, a dollar every other day, $5, $10 a month into a Robinhood account, which will help you buy stocks. I do this all the time. I started saving. Uh, I started because I, I don't know much about investing. I have a financial advisor that does like my major stuff, but I wanted to kind of dabble in it just for fun and started buying some cryptocurrency and some stocks here and there. I know nothing about them. I just do a tiny bit of research, literally less than a 15 minute hustle. And I've already saved like 12 grand automatically by just saving a little bit a month and investing into little stocks here and there. I think it's really fantastic. And that's only been like a year, a little bit of automatic saving. These are really the action steps. Start saving. Earn a little bit more if you feel like you're underwater. You guys, this doesn't come from somebody that hasn't had to dig out of the broke hole. $50,000 in debt, a foreclosed home. That's my and what it's like to be drowning in debt. I understand the hopelessness that that feels. Here we are talking about wealthy and rich. And some people over here are like, dude, I washed a paper plate. That's my financial status. <laughs> the reality is you can do better. It's going to take work. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take discipline. But you can because I did. And I'm not that special. There's not some crazy secret formula. It's what do you want more than you want right now? What do you want more long-term and forever? More, you have to want that more than what you want in the moment. That's called discipline. You want the result more than you want the temporary fix. Set reminders for yourself. You want to start investing? Invest a dollar a day or a dollar a month. That will eventually add up. These small steps, people say that a dollar a day is $365 a year. If you did that for 10 years, plus compound interest, you could have a boatload of money. Been missing it. Pay attention. Invest as much, much as possible, as early as possible. There's lots of different ways to do these things, but really what I love is what Shaq said, because this is really, truly what I think of the definition of wealth and, and investing. And you don't just have to buy cryptocurrency or stock in Amazon or, you know, something like that. You know, take a note from Shaq here. He's like, he makes investments not for monetary reasons, but because it's going to change people's lives. That hit home for me. And that is something that I totally align with because that's what I do. I like to invest in things that are going to make people happy, that are going to make them better. I invest in you guys. I invest in these trainings and these podcasts because I believe in you. I'm willing to put, I'm willing and have been for over seven years now investing my time in you because you're worth it because your net worth is going to be worth it do you believe that really wealthy way if you have started a business 
you're on your way. I want you to believe that for you. So next time you're thinking about that and looking at that and it's something that you want more of, think about those little things. The small steps will add up. That's the only way I got to where I was. I didn't save $50,000 and then just pay it all off at one time. Little by little, I chipped away at it. And I thought it was never going to end, to be honest. It felt so long and so many years, but it did. And it was. So figure out what is it that you want? What kind of legacy do you want for yourself? Do you want to be rich and, or do you want to be wealthy? Choose. You choose. And let me know how I can help. I know you guys could be anywhere else listening to any other thing, doing any other thing right now. I am grateful that you're listening to this. And I hope that it has changed you, change your perspective, change your mind, give you hope, give you inspiration. If it does, please leave a review and say so. Leave a review on, on iTunes. It takes like two minutes. It's awesome. Also subscribe, follow all the socials. There's more of this to come. I know you guys like business how-tos and all that kind of stuff, and that is coming just like it is every year. But this year, we're really going to focus on the characteristics that change people's lives, their wealth, their status. See you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.